Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. Doing okay? Those of you who are watching at home, how is everyone doing at home? Comment below. Please share this if you can. And uh, I want to thank everyone for being here today on Trinity Sunday, one of my all-time favorite Sundays. You're going to find out in a second. It's eight minutes of the best music since Bohemian Rhapsody. It's going to be great, all right? It's my favorite hymn of all time that we're going to start out with, so I hope that you sing it proudly and loudly. Um, one thing that I do want to say, though, is I want to thank everyone for being here today because it's the first time that we're doing an in-church 10 o'clock service as long as I've been here. I've been here for about 12 years, and we've always done through the summer, we've always done three services. Uh, things are different after COVID, obviously. They're also different because we have the capability to live stream. Um, but this summer, especially since I'm going to be going on sabbatical after this service, um, we thought that we would pare it down to two services. Now, we realize that that will not affect the 730 crowd as much, right, because their time stays the same. But some of you are coming a little early, right? Some of you got to sleep in, and you're, you're shouting hooray for that. But either way, I want to thank you for being patient with us and for attending this 10 o'clock service throughout the summer. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think you're going to get to know each other because some of you might look at each other and say, hey, who are you? Are you new here? So they've been there for 30 years or whatever. All right? So maybe just get to know each other, introduce yourselves to each other at the peace or what have you, and you might make a friend, you might know someone from work or from your neighborhood that you didn't know they attended the other service. So that's a good thing. All right? Um, either way, right now I want to start. Let's uh, all stand if we could, and we're going to sing St. Patrick's Breastplate. Please stand as you are able. sort out some technical difficulties.
blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you and your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way... At the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up, at the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. And when he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him, like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. We'll read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Your 
You have set up a stronghold against our adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek out, seek him out. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, 
and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Do me a favor right now and just turn to your neighbor and uh, introduce yourself, if you could, please. Someone you don't know, (laughs) introduce yourself. Good. John, Sarah, hello. All right. I do this because as a church, and really as a religion, we're founded on relationship. And that's the whole idea of Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is, uh, it's the only Sunday we really have that's based on a doctrine. And that doctrine is the Trinity, that God is one God in three persons. But those three persons have a unique and intricate relationship. And that relationship is really the example for all of our relationships. My relationship with you, your relationship with me, mine with Patty, Patty's with me, and, and so forth and so on. And that relationship is founded on trust. If you look at the gospel, here's what Jesus said to his disciples about the relationship. He says, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, that spirit will guide you into all the truth. That spirit will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. So there's an incredible amount of trust between Jesus and the Spirit. And I think probably between the Spirit and God to say what God wants it to say. Either way, there's a lot of trust between these three entities. And you can imagine that that's the only way that work gets done, is when you trust other people. Like if you're on a sports team, right? I was on a sports team, played hockey, I was a center. Now your defensive responsibilities in your own end revolve around trust. You have to trust that every player is going to be in the right spot, doing their thing. Because if they're not, then the whole thing falls apart. You read me? You know what this is like? And so a defenseman's responsibility is to stand in front of the net, more or less. But a center had to get the high slot. The center had a lot of responsibility. And if I wasn't doing my job, that meant that the other players couldn't do their job. It was all founded on trust. That was the only way we could be a good team together, right? So on Trinity Sunday, what I wanted to do was I wanted to explore the ways in which we trust each other as a church. Now, fascinating thing. When I was in Rhode Island, the first uh, year that I was there, I was rector of the church in Rhode Island. And this guy had been there for 14 years at another church. He said to me, he said, Peter, you only become rector when you're able to mess up, I mean, really screw it up. And then get in front of your church and own it and say, I'm sorry. And then have them forgive you because then you can begin to trust each other. Then you begin to trust each other. Only then. And I think it's true that when we're in a relationship with someone, when we're able to own it and say, here's what I did wrong and I'm sorry for it. That's when you can actually do work. Because that's how trust is engendered. Because if I can't trust someone to own something that they did, how can I trust them in a relationship? It's a great question. I wrote about it in Dragon Tales this week. But it's the only way that we can get ahead. It's the only way that we can become who we are meant to be. And the same thing is true as a church. We are only able to become the church that we want to become when we're able to say 
who we have been as a church. And honestly look at it without prejudice, without criticism, without rose-colored glasses and say, this is who we were. This is who we are because this is who we want to become. You notice today we have a graphic on our cover. And Jim, did you, Jim Douglas, did you make that graphic? No, that came to us? Somebody did it? Dan? Mike Wynn? Joanne Tillman. Joanne Tillman. Joanna Tillman, who now worships at church on the square up in Baltimore, a wonderful member here for several years, came up with this graphic. And this graphic has a series of names. If you don't already know, these are names of people of African descent who were not allowed admittance or entrance through the front door at St. Margaret's Church because of the color of their skin and their role in society. They were slaves. They were part of chattel slavery of which this church had a part. These are people who are remembered in our registers because they were either baptized or married or buried from this church, but not inside the church. Right? They could come to church, probably through another entrance, but they were not allowed to receive communion the few times that communion was served throughout the year because they were people of African descent. We took a step back about eight years ago in November uh, with a program called the Trail of Souls, which was put on by the diocese, and it was a program that went through several sites in the diocese that had to do with chattel slavery. And the idea was to own the history, to talk about the history truthfully, and say, we acknowledge that this is what happened here, right? And we acknowledge through these plaques here, you see over there on the wall next to Rex and Vera, um, that we played a part in the time of chattel slavery that we might not be proud of, but it's still who we are as a church. That people of African descent were not allowed to receive sacraments inside the church. Apparently the rectory down the road was a popular place for baptisms and weddings, which is lovely. At the same time, that church is a different church. It's a different church than who we are now, for sure, where we try our best to welcome everyone of every race, creed, or gender, or orientation, or expression of identity. We try our best to do that. I hope we do a good job. That's not who we always were. But we can't be who we want to be unless we own our history. I mean, does that make sense? That we can't get to where we want to go. We can't be the beloved community of God that we try to be, that we want to be, unless we talk about the church that we were. And that means reading these names, because they've never been read in our space before. This sacred space that we all call our spiritual home, these names have been kept from being read aloud. And we're going to write that wrong today. The only way that we can move forward as a community, as a community of God, as a team, the only way we get to do that is to be open and honest with each other, to be truthful about our history. And we take another step in that today. Now, the truth Reconciliation and Reparations Committee, which has done a lot of this work along with our History Committee, the work that they've done is not over. And when the TRR task force got together, the goal was not to eradicate racism on the peninsula. I think more and more we realize that the goal is really just to educate ourselves and start the work internally to talk about what it means to be repairers of the breach. Even the word reconciliation takes on a different tone when we realize the relationship between people of African descent who were brought here in chattel slavery and the landowners who were white, that relationship was never really consiled. So how do we reconcile it when it was never right to begin with? So we're learning all this stuff as we go along. And guess what? We make mistakes about it as we go along. I make mistakes about it. Sometimes I say the wrong thing, even when I mean the right thing. 
It's important that in those little moments, we can say, I'm sorry. Here's what I said. It might not have been what I meant or what I intended, but clearly it had an impact. And for that, I apologize. Frankly, I think half the mess that we're in right now as a country and as a culture is our inability to forgive and to say we're sorry. It's an inability to own our own actions and be responsible for that that we've done to ourselves and to other people. So let today be an example for us all, for us all. Whether we moved to this country in the 1900s, whether our ancestors came from someplace other than Europe or Africa. Let this be an example of what this church can be, a place where we own our past and where we try to own it in such a way that it does not contain our future. Our future is in the hands of God and God alone. And thanks be to God for that. But our work, our work is to build relationships, to build them around trust, accountability, and honesty. Amen. As we are able, let us stand and confess our faith using the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are gathered to acknowledge a grave sadness at this opportunity for what has been lost to the past with an urgency that the future will find St. Margaret's Church to be a welcoming parish to all. Today we identify and repent for the pain caused to those who are recorded in our history and memorialize those who were not members, those who could not become members, and those who did not look like members in the past. We commend those persons of African descent whom we can only enumerate and those we can name, who before and after the abolition of chattel slavery were not allowed to walk in the front door of St. Margaret's Church, who could not select pews of their choosing, who were denied the sacraments made available to white members, who were baptized and married outside church services and the church building, and who were never permitted to become members. Starting today, and going forward, they are to be remembered. We now read the names of those we remember as confirmed parishioners of St. Margaret's Church, as our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, and who are baptized, married, and buried by our clergy. Adams, Anderson, Allen, Barnes, Barnett, Dykes, Emery, Ennis, 
Evans, Evans, Fleetwood, Gans, Green, Griffin, Hall, Harris, Heyman, Hazelton, Heath, Heinzman, Henson, Hinsman, Hill, Honey, Hopkins, Hunt, Hinsley, Ireland, Johnson, Jones, Levin, Little, Martin, Maynard, Myers, Mose, Murray, Nash, Pulley, Scoggins, Spray, Stansbury, Stevens, Stepney, Thomas, Tucker, White, Wilson, Woodward, Wright. We honor those enslaved and freed persons of African descent who worked to build parish structures and who were connected to our community through baptism, marriages, and burials conducted by our clergy. We remember them, and we acknowledge what the parish was, what the parish did in the past, and what the parish must become. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for our presiding Bishop Michael and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, God of freedom, we pray for our nation and for all the, lead and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love, God of freedom. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and the birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to stir, strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially Lindsay, Jennifer, Philip, Christy, Maddie, and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy. God of grace, we pray for those who have died for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace. 
our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth. The barriers would crumble and divisions cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Almighty God, source of all that is, giver of every good gift, you create all people in your image and call us to love one another as you love us. We confess that we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family. We have desired to live in freedom while building walls between ourselves and others. We have longed to be known and accepted for who we are while making judgments of others based on the color of skin or the shape of features or varieties of human experience. We have tried to love our neighbors individually while yet benefiting from systems that hold those same neighbors in oppression. Forgive us, holy God. Give us eyes to see you as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work of reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community, united in our diversity, even as you are one with Christ and the Spirit, holy and undivided Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please be seated. How are the sweets doing over there? How are we doing, Billy? Doing all right? All right. Sorry I didn't get you over there. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to thank you all for attending today. And if you're visiting St. Margaret's Church today, you picked a great day. We've been waiting for you. Please do us a favor and uh, fill out the newcomer card that's found in your pew pouch as our children come forward. Look, they found the cross. I told you it wasn't lost. We just hadn't found it yet. All right. Um, so as our kids come back in, I want to remind everyone that communion here at St. Margaret's Church is a communal meal. That means everyone is invited. We don't consider this to be our altar or St. Margaret's altar. It's really God's table. And therefore, all of you, no matter what denomination you call your own, where you find yourself in your spiritual journey, your sexual orientation, gender identification, sports team affiliation, or political persuasion, you're all welcome to receive communion in this church. To receive, just come forward and stretch out your hands and you will be fed. If you'd rather not receive for whatever reason, simply cross your arms over your chest and we'll give you a blessing. Either way, we are thrilled that you are here. And um, one thing that I want to announce is that um, we are going to do a communion class for children today. Following the service, uh, you can join myself, Pastor Patty, and maybe members of the Altar Guild. Who we're going to show you what we do up here at communion. So for children, if you have questions about 
the bread and the wine and why we do it, um, those will be answered. If you have questions about how to do it, those will be answered as well. Cashin, of course, as a member of St. Margaret's Day School, already knows an awful lot about communion. Is that true, Cashin? Who is known to us in the breaking of the bread? That's right, Jesus, all right? Cashin um, is part of our St. Margaret's Day School, and she just had her last day of school last week, right? Yeah, so hopefully she'll be back next year. Maybe, yes, maybe, all right, so either way. Um, thank you, Cashin. Thank you, Furnace, for being here. I appreciate it. All right, uh, so that's going to be after church today, right up here, up here, right? Yes. And Lemonade Hour, yeah, so we want to announce the Lemonade Hour. There's going to be lemonade down by the playground and also up in front of the parish hall. There's no coffee because y'all are too caffeinated. Um, so it's just lemonade today, all right? But I want to thank Judy. I want to thank also the parents for being involved in that, signing up. Please see Emily, please see Emily Del Sordo for right. more information right. on that, yeah. all right? Final announcement that I want to make is, uh, you know, it's a season of departures. I know I'm leaving on sabbatical uh, today after this service. I'll be on my way uh, unplugging and detaching from the church. Um, you can't send me any emails because they get deleted for the next two months. Uh, <laughs> but let me just say this, that I have uh, a terrific staff in place, and your church has wonderful leadership in place. Kristen Berthelot, our senior warden, just came in. Patty Sachs, um, please take care of them while I'm gone. Um, look out for them. Look out for Jimmy D, our, our music director. Look out for each other. Um, don't be afraid to call up Patty for no other reason other than just say, hey, you're doing a good job. We love to hear stuff like that. Yeah. All right? Uh, do you want to say something about that, Patty? I want to say um, I have no doubt that they're going to take good care of me. Yeah, good. But I also <laughs> want to say that um, What's this? we need to pray him out. Ah, jeez. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Say it. Let us pray. Gracious God, look with favor on this, your servant Peter. Grant him rest and renewal. Give him insight and wisdom. Hear his prayers. And keep him safe, because we want him back, because we love him. <laughs> we trust you, Lord, to give him a time of, of rest. A time where he may grow in faith, grow in love. And come back renewed and refreshed. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of Peter in our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Patty. Love you. Thank you so much. It, it, it wasn't about that. That's not where I was going with that. I want to invite Ted and Heidi Roig up. And Hannah, if you can come on up. Ted and Heidi and Hannah are moving to Maine. Um, Hannah's going to take her uh, talents to, is it Exeter? Which it, what school? Brewster, Brewster Academy. So we're going to pray them out. The Roigs have been instrumental members of our church for several years, and we will miss them greatly as they go to Maine. So let's pray. Almighty God, be with Ted and Hannah and Heidi as their journeys go on from here. Be with their new home up in Maine. Help them to know that they are loved beyond measure, and help them to know that they always have a place here at St. Margaret's. And to look upon this place with love and always remember it with favor. And the blessing of God Almighty be upon them now and always. Amen. 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 Blessings to you all. Thank you. Thank you. All the best, Ted. All the best. All right. All right. Um, it's such, I'm so lucky to be part of this church. I'm so lucky to see some of you um, being here and just the moment that we just had reading all the names together. You know, I was supposed to read those names by myself. And then you all read, read them together. So I'm really proud of you guys. I'm proud of the work that you're doing. I'm proud of who you are, who you're becoming. And we're not done yet. There's a lot more work to be done. So um, I know we have a lot of feelings about today and about uh, reconciliation. I want you to be honest with those feelings, all right, if you're feeling whatever. It's valid to feel whatever you're feeling. But take that and use it. You know, think about joining the Truth, Reconciliation, and Reparations Task Force. Talk to Dan Toodle or Beth Kopak about that. Um, if you want to learn more about the history, please talk to Barbara Breeden or Mike Wynn if you want to do that work. Um, but we need you. The world needs us. Um, and God needs us to be doing this work. So thank you all very, very much 
for being in this church at this time and this place. And now, joyfully, ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord in trinity of persons and unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. 
Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Mary, Margaret, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take these gifts in remembrance that Christ lived and died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
As we are able, please stand. And let's pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the Spirit.
I got your note. Okay. So you're good either. Well, we picked a date. So next this coming soon. You weren't the only one. Okay. I got your note. Thank you. All right. Yeah, it's a good Sunday. It's one of those Sundays. Good Sundays for him. You know, it's one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Yeah. We got a ladder here today. 